Hello and welcome back to another episode of the TS Soccer Training Podcast, where we are committed to helping your player grow on and off the field. I'm your host, Coach Taylor, and I'm excited to have you join us today. If you've not already, please rate and review and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. It helps out a lot. Last week, if you didn't chat, catch it, we talked to Gabe for a fan of the soccer dream, and he got a lot of great information, talked a lot about his journey, and talked to and kind of talked a lot about just soccer and in general and how he's giving back to the game and how he's trying to be a good mentor to the next generation. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead. You can catch that on our YouTube page. You can catch that wherever you're getting this feed. So this week we're going to talk about how to support your player after an injury. And it's nothing that anybody wants to go through. It's something that is extremely difficult. And honestly, it's, it's not a fun part of the game, but understanding as a parent, how you can support and encourage your player after an injury occurs is a huge part of what you can do to be able to help them. So let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk about that. So I want to take this time to talk a little bit about my off this field resource guide. This resource guide is for players and for parents who want to help their player and, and give them tools to kind of take control of the, the mental side of the game and, and really be able to change their mentality. It has the guy, it has the resources that I use to be able to help my players in, in the program. And again, I've seen a lot of growth from players and their mentality when they start taking control of their, their own mentality and how they can be able to grow that. So again, lots of good information in there. If that is something that you're interested, go ahead, you can check it out. It's going to, the link to it will be below, or you can go to tfsoccertraining.com backslash mindset, and you can be able to get that free download. Okay, back to the show. So welcome back from the break. Wanna first say that, again, I am not a, a licensed medical practitioner, and so do not take this advice for medical advice. So I wanna get that disclaimer out there first. But unfortunately, injuries are part of the game, and it's going to be one of those things where you're going to deal with this as a family, maybe hopefully not where you're having a really major injury, but it's, it's one of these things that you, you can be prepared to deal with. And what you can do as a parent is, is really help and support and encourage your player when you go through it. So lately I've had to work with families who've had to deal more with this issue. So these are kind of, it's like a slim down version of all the conversations I've had with families recently. So three things I would say, number one is don't delay, seek help. You know, so many times parents and players want to keep pushing through. They want to push seeking off help. And, and why? Because they don't want to hear the bad news. They don't want to, they don't want to have to deal with it and don't want to face it. And I think that's a natural inclination for all of us. You know, for me, when I was dealing with my own injuries, you know, I kept pushing it off. I can't not wanting to, to hear what the doctors had to say, because I don't want to hear that I can't play. I want to keep pushing through it. I, I want to see if it gets better. But unfortunately, problems, they just keep popping up. And if you keep pushing that problem down further down the line, when it finally comes to the light, you're going to have to deal with a much bigger problem than if you just took, you took, you you stepped out in front of it and you and you kind of understood like, hey, I'm going to hit this head on and try to be able to deal with this. So we don't want the problem to get worse. So if your player is having an issue with their muscles, ankles, knees, whatever it may be, you know, seek help, take precaution, go ahead and, and reach out to a medical, a licensed medical professional and, and don't delay on it. And then number two, the second part, and this is unfortunately something that uh, I think players and parents do, they get that first opinion and they do not seek the second opinion. So and anything, right, in life, you, you want to be able to get that second opinion or you want to get you want to get confirming advice that says the same thing. But you know, unfortunately we don't. And and I have to bring up another a player in my program and unfortunately he tore his ACL and you know a player landed on him and kind of just end up messing up a lot of his knee I think it was his meniscus ACL LCL it was a huge tear and it was you know at the time they didn't really know what was going on with him and so they they reached out to their athletic trainer and she said or he, he cleared them of saying you know you're fine you know you just it's just a bone bruise you should be good to go in a, in a couple of weeks and 
I'm not saying this to, to bash that physical trainer. I'm not saying this to say like, hey, you know, they're bad at their job. I think they're wonderful. I think they do an amazing work. And I'm so appreciative of all the physical trainers. I'm sorry, athletic trainers that I've come across. But you need to go out and continue to evaluate and seek a second opinion, especially if it doesn't sit right. If your player is still bothering them, you know, they're trying to move and it's still not getting better, uh, not getting better. You need to go out and, and reach out and find that second opinion, because if not, you know, again, it's just going to get worse and worse. And unfortunately, you know, the players program, they did not seek, seek a second opinion right away until you know, the player was at practice and trying to start cutting and, and end up the knee kind of buckled and caved on them. So unfortunately, they end up going back and, and finding out really the true extent of the injury after that. But who knows what kind of damage that the player ended up causing to the injury because they, they did not seek that second opinion. Again, I want to say this, you know, just because they tell us what we want to hear doesn't mean we follow up our do or due diligence. It, you know, sometimes we have to kind of take and see the bigger picture and and help our players to understand okay yes we got this opinion let's go ahead and just follow up with somebody else nothing against this person but we just need to do our due diligence because again one thing i've learned is you have to be the biggest advocate for your own health which kind of leads me into my final point which is to say you know understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint, right? So you may have heard the worst. You may, may, it may have been the worst thing that you've possibly heard, but exercise patience. Again, as a parent, you have to see the bigger picture and they, they might not see it. They may hear like, okay, I have an ACL injury and, you know, recovery from this is six to nine months. Well, I want to do it in six months and I'm going to be back better, faster, stronger than the other. And I absolutely agree with that. I want them to be faster playing. I want them to be strong. I want them to be better than ever before as soon as possible. But we also want to be able to, we want to be able to see the long term. You know, you know, we injury rates is extremely high, especially with something like an ACL tear. So it's really important for a player to be able to, to really take the time and say like, okay, I, I, I know I want to get back as soon as possible, but I want to get back and literally be as strong as possible. I don't want to go back and, and, and be injured. I had a player in my own program before she came back. I started training with her right after ACL injury, right after she was cleared and she was doing well, was playing extremely confident, was, was going probably 100%. And then she ended up re-tearing her ACL. And it was so frustrating, I know, for her. And it was also frustrating um, for me, because we had put so much work into getting her back and she was playing great soccer and, and she tore ACL. And then she worked extremely hard, came back, and then we ended up tearing it again. And it was just awful and devastating. But again, I think if she would have looked back or if her parents would have looked back on what they would do is they would have taken her even longer instead of rushing her back after maybe that first ACL, maybe even take it even slower to kind of allow her a chance for her body to, to build back up again, because it ends, it's, it's a long time to lay off to try to start ramping up again. So take the time, understand that you, you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to really take the time to be, be at the level that you want to be at. And it's okay. It, you know, in the long term, it's going to, it's going to matter what it is. What's going to matter is how did you come back from, how did you bounce back from this, this setback? And I want to say this, I want to end, end it at this point here, just because they're injured and just because they have, they're not playing and training with the team doesn't mean they're stopped being an athlete. You know, they're still an injured athlete is still an athlete. You know, again, I want to preface this. You need to have proper medical guidance. You need to get this from your doctor or your surgeon or your, your physical um, therapist. You know, they can seek out what exercise that they can still do that allow them to continue to keep, you know, their fitness up, to keep their to keep their training routine, so that they're not they're not just allowing allowing us, uh, themselves to let themselves go and say like, hey, you know, I'm done, you know, playing for the next nine months, so I'm just gonna kind of be a slob and I'll go to physical therapy, but really, you know, I'm not gonna I'm gonna stop being an athlete. And most people are not like this. So most players I've trained, most players in general are not like that. But you know, it's it's on them and it's on you to kind of help to guide them to say, hey, what can we still do? What can we, you know, can we do if it's a, a lower body injury? 
you know, can we do upper body? What upper body exercises can we do? Can we do core things? What, what other things can I do to be able to keep my body at some level of fitness as I'm working to rehab my injury? In conclusion, these things I want you to be able to do after your child is injured is number one, seek help. Do not delay or wait and see. Number two, seek a second opinion. Don't be afraid to, to go out go outside and, and kind of schedule a doctor's appointment or schedule uh, something with the sports med doc. Seek that second opinion. And, and number three, exercise patience. Understand that this is gonna be a long journey. It's gonna be a long road. But again, your player is going to learn from this. They're going to, they're going to grow from this. And your job is to help them to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and help them to see that we are going to get through this. Okay. Thanks again for, for joining us. Thank you so much for coming out. Again, let me know your injury journey. Or let me know your player's injury journey. I love hearing people's stories of how they've overcome setbacks or how their players have overcome setbacks. So if you have a story to be able to share with me, I would love to hear that. If you are interested in learning more about one of our training programs, whether in person or our virtual training, I would love to be able to get in contact with you about that. So go ahead. My number is below, or you can go to our website and you know fill out a form to set up a time to chat about your player's goals. Okay. Until next time, please take care.